Back to Celebrity Radio, it's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today, a fabulous actress who's looking stunning. She's award winning, best known for Katie and Corrie and also that fabulous show Wild of Heart. She was there for three years and she's coming this Christmas to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves at the St. Helens Theatre Royal. You can see her there early December through January 7th. And I'm delighted to say that Lucy Jo Hudson joins us on the phone now. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm delicious, but not as good as you. I was just Googling you, and my God, you're looking well. How are you doing? You're looking fabulous. Oh, thanks. It's all about exercise, I think, from dancing earlier in the year. But I'm now good, thank you. Really good. Excited to get into Panto. Yeah, it's that time of year. I mean, here we are nearly in November, and it all starts happening. I mean, the pressure on these producers to make them fabulous is really incredible now. You can't just put a bit of scenery on and get the odd turning. You've got to put on a a spectacular. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I I think it will be as well. I mean, the launch today has gone really well. Met Johnny Vegas um, and the rest of the cast. um, They're all so lovely. I've already said the costumes are fantastic. The script is funny. There's some amazing songs in it this year as well for all the kids and some old schools for some of the adults as well. So absolutely perfect at the minute. So um, I'm excited and can't wait to get started. It's great, isn't it, how it's sort of become cool again. There was a period, I think, where Panto was just a bit dull and a bit passe. But, I mean, I saw the Palladium one last year in in London. Exceptional, incredible. The Birmingham one's brilliant. And then, of course, we look as we go north. People love it. They sell out and people want a good laugh, don't they? And that's what you've got to give them. absolutely, yeah. I mean, I was trying to book tickets for my family and I've realised how quickly they really do sell out because I'm struggling to get tickets for my own family. So, um, (laughs) and it's an intimate theatre, so it's a bit smaller. So at least you get a bit of, um, you know, you get a bit of interaction with the um, with the audience and stuff. So I'm so excited to, to be doing it. It's been about 10 years since I last did Panto. So I know it's going to be hard work. So we're doing three shows a day some days, but it's going to be so much fun. Um, can't wait to get stuck into it. This is what I need to talk to you about. I'm nervous you've got a bad agent. And let me tell you why. You haven't signed up for any of those 11 a.m. shows, have you? Because they're a killer. Yeah. I'm doing, there's quite a few, you know, there's a couple of 10 o'clock shows and they are actually oh. with kids. So um, they're going to be a tough one, but I mean, the kids are going to love it and we're going to vibe off them, so I'm, I'm sure it'll be brilliant. Um, oh. But the shows are all, ge- I love this one in St. Helens because they're all geared around the kids. 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 5 o'clock, rather than your, you know, 7 or 8 o'clock at night, it's all for the kids, so um, my little girl can come and watch it, which is just brilliant. Uh, yeah, and I can't, just can't wait to get started. I'd need intravenous sanatogen if I was doing a 10 a.m. show. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've signed up to it and not probably realised how hard or, or challenging it's going to be physically, but um, it's a short run, so we'll, we'll power through it. The other so, thing as well is you can't phone it in. You've got to give it 100% or it just doesn't work. Completely. No, you really do. Um, and I kind of like that. I have to tone it back when I'm on set anyway, so it's quite nice that I can I've spent a long time, many, many years, nearly 20 years coming up to Corrie speaking to the different stars and you do have to rein it in. I mean, that's a proper job. It's hard work, long hours, but let's face it, you're not having to show off and there's certainly not a lot of campery. I guess Panto's the opposite yeah. where you've got to go in all guns blazing, knock it out the park and yeah. after a month you get to go home and relax. Exactly. You have got, it's all or nothing in Panto and you've just got to give it your all with the singing and the dancing and the acting. It's just got to be 150 percent all the time just because especially if you're sat in a circle or the gods you know they want to be able to see a lot of animation and hear it and and see it from so far away so you've got to give it so much for every performance because everyone's paying tickets to come and see you so you've got to make sure it's special for everybody so it's going to be exhausting but i am i'm ready for the challenge are you amazed how well your career has gone because to have a life and career in show business that's been so successful as yours is incredible oh thank you um, I think I've been very lucky. I mean, first of all, I love what I do, and I get paid for what I love to do as well, which is just an amazing, bonus. isn't it? Yeah, it is, and I get to meet some different people in walks of life and connect with others, and I absolutely love my job, and I think I'm so lucky that I'm still going as strong as I am, and I just hope it continues. We got to know you in Corrie. That was obviously your big break. But, I mean, you'd had a career before that. And there's not a lot about that sort of period before. I mean, you said you did Panto 10 years ago. What had you done yeah. before Corrie? Um, uh, uh, dancing was my background. So Corrie was my first big job into telly. 
Um, I'd always done theatre, I'd always been on stage. So this is a part of me why I still want to do panto. And I did the dance show earlier in the year because I still have a passion for sort of performing live on stage. So, but that's what I used to do before was dancing. Um, and then it changed into acting. And, and now I absolutely love what I do. I just hope it, like I said, such good, it continues. Isn't it funny how you go in Corrie and you're the biggest star in the country, but then you do something like Wild at Heart, which suddenly makes you credible. I don't know what I mean by that statement, but it's kind of true, isn't mean. it? I do. I do get it. Yeah, drama seems to be taken a little bit more serious than soap. But actually, when you look at the, the grueling schedule these soap stars do, I mean, they could be working like 14, 16 hour days, five, six days a week. Um, and they probably don't get enough credit for it because they do some amazing things. They've no rehearsal time, they're straight in, you've got to get it straight away. Whereas we have a bit more time to rehearse on, on dramas and um, and I, I love both, but I do, I think the pace is, it's much pacier on, on, a soap, uh, on a soap opera rather than it is drama. So I definitely, I, I think I'd rather stick to the dramas. I was just up there um, with Kath a few weeks ago and talking to Kim uh-huh. and, and all the guys. And I mean, I don't know how they basically churn out a movie every single week. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Three hours of TV. It is like being at Tesco's putting through bags of carrots every single day. You've got to get it out, haven't you? It's a job. Yeah, yeah, it can be relentless. It is. And, it, you know, if you're in storyline, I know from myself, I was quite heavy storyline. My husband's been in some heavy storylines. And it is all all day every day and it is it's full on um but you know we love what we do so that's why that's why we do it and you get to challenge yourself daily it's brilliant getting storyline because you get to do something rather than you know can i have a pint please or you know when they're walking the road but you're actually getting to challenge yourself so it's hard work when you're it's, when you're in it but then you do get the downtime when you're not in storyline so you do mm. get a bit of more um relaxation and you can enjoy being with your family and stuff but i kind of like the dramas because i can be at home being a mummy for sienna and dipping in and out of work, so it sort of works better for me doing the dramas. I'll tell you who my two favourite actors are. There's Tyrone, there's Roy, <laughs> and I love these guys. I'll tell you why. They never stop acting, oh. whether they're in the back having a pint or whether they're actually delivering lines, they're always them. And that's a great skill in yeah. itself because, again, to become the character and be believable is really the, the art of soap, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I will make sure I tell Alan that. Thank you. But he, he is... He always does, if he, even if he's in the background, he will make sure he's constantly working rather than chatting on his phone or messaging somebody. You know, he will, he's always on it. Yeah. Um, and you do have to be on the soap, yeah, because you don't realise you're constantly, you know, in behind shots all the time. So it is, um, yeah, it can be it's quite hard work, but it's, it's definitely worth it being in a show like that. Let's talk as if we're not recording and as if nobody's listening. I've interviewed Norris before and obviously the William Roaches and people like that. It does seem to me that the line between some of the characters, especially those who've been there a long time, and real life isn't that great, is it? I mean, they they, they are pretty similar in real life. There probably is some, yeah. I mean, you'll have interviewed plenty, so you'll have seen them, won't you? But yeah, I think you can sort of... I mean, I know sometimes I've got a job and gone, oh, God, I, I do that, and I think... Maybe they sort of see a bit of you in the character when they cast you. Well, can you um, act that long, sort of three hours a week? I think in the end you either become them, you morph into each other, don't you, I suppose? I think so, yeah. You've got to do it, especially if it's up. Absolutely, yeah. And then is it nice to be with somebody like Alan, who's a nice guy, not only in real life, but also in the show? I mean, nobody's ever said, I don't like Tyrone. He's one of the nice guys. That must be nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, everybody loves him. In fact, the only thing he does get is a lot of women, like elder women that are like wanting to mother him and take him home and cook him tea and wash his clothes <laughs> and just like, go on, have him for a week, you can have him for a week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he gets a lot of people want to mother him. So, um, and we're going around Tesco's and he's got trolleys of these older ladies sort of following him going, oh yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's really cute, he's cute. Does it ever get annoying that we care? I mean, you both were in the number one soap, in my opinion. You both were big stars, and then you both fell in love and got married and had kids, and we get yeah. to follow that journey. But the downside of that is down times and bad times we want to know, and good times and great times we want to know. You can't yeah. really be private and have it both ways, can you? You can't really, no. Um, and it, it's a tough thing, because obviously Alan and I don't feel any different to anybody else, but a lot of people sometimes treat you slightly differently. But... We try to keep um, a lot of our personal life personal. There's a part of it that can't. Sometimes it is in the public and you just have to just uh, ad- 
adapt to that and accept that. Otherwise, you'll you'll struggle in this industry because everybody does want to know everything. Like you say, when you're having a tough time, they want to know. When you're having a great time, they want to know. So it's sort of finding that balance, really. And I think we've sort of got that thing that works for me and Al. As we sit here today, you're about to star in a huge pantomime with Johnny Vegas, who will be on the big screens from what I understand. He's going to be appearing nightly in uh, a sort of some ethereal being. Your career's yeah. cracking on. Uh, you're in love. You're married. You've got a baby. Is this a brilliant yeah. time for you now at 34? Because I don't know how you feel. Mid-30s have been great for me. I know people say, oh, I don't like it over 30. For me, this has been my time. How do you feel? I feel exactly the same. I think I definitely think when you get older, you don't worry about what people think as much. And um, since I've relaxed about work and having Sienna, it's sort of fallen into place. I think I've been really fortunate with the jobs I've got recently. They've just worked with being a mummy, being a wife, going to work, doing my time as well for myself, and and having fun while doing it. So it's been a brilliant year, I have to say. And I'm I'm finishing it off with a bang working with the awesome Johnny Vegas. Yeah, beautiful. So, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I remember the interview, I think it was on this morning when you were at Wild at Heart, and I actually felt bad for you because that show took you away for an incredible amount of time. And that must have been a real strain. I mean, I know it's a gig and we all want to be in work, but to be away from your family and your loved ones is really tough, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, when I went for the audition, I just thought, I'm not going to get this, so I'll just go meet him. And then I got the job and I was like, oh my God. God, I'm away for six months in South Africa to a place I've never been. I was only 21 as well at the time, so it was all new to me actually leaving, like, the north. So mm. to then go all the way to South Africa on my own at that age, was it was daunting. But Stephen was amazing, Stephen Tomkinson and Amanda Holden, and everybody was so lovely, and we became a little family out there. So I ended up falling in love with South Africa. It became a bit of a second home for me. Um, and what a great gig it really was. I was fortunate my family could come out, fly out, stay out with me see the farm, come and experience what it's like living out there. Um, it was hard at times, missing Al and missing family. But um, unfortunately, in our industry, you sort of, it had to go where the work is. Um, and it, it took me there for a few years. <laughs> yeah, and I guess in one way, it proves the strength. If you if you can get through six months apart, you can get through anything, can't you? Exactly, yeah. And six months out of the rest of our lives. And that's all I kept thinking. It's only six months. It's not six years. It's six months. We can power through it. And he used to come out and see me a few times and I'd come home halfway through the filming schedule. So we managed to make it work. You know, that's the thing. That's all you can do is make it work. I did a breakfast show in Nairobi for, funnily enough, six months, and then I came home. But it does change your life, Africa. I don't know whether it's the Lion King effect or something, but, my God, that <laughs> continent really, yeah. doesn't it? You've only got to see a giraffe in the middle of the Maasai Mara, and suddenly your life's changed yeah. forever. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, I literally get to walk side by side with lions and um, giraffes and zebras. They were on set. You know, it was it was so amazing that actually became the norm a director saying excuse me can we just move that giraffe to the left or you know, rather, than, rather than saying can you get out of shot it's like can we get that zebra in and can you just move that lion over there and where's the cheetah and so it was quite surreal it was a brilliant gig and to think the year before they were moving norris a bit to the left that was all <laughs> <laughs> you never know, do you? What's it like being a mum? I mean, is there anything that matters more than that? I guess it makes everything we've spoken about for the last 10 minutes totally irrelevant because that's the centre of your world, yeah. I guess. It does, yeah. I, she changed my life to Sienna and um, she is my priority. So every job I get, sort of, it works in with me being a mummy. And really, because my jobs that I do have, it's, you know, there's more, I've just done a drama that comes out next year for the BBC. So I was a, I was in half of the series, so it's perfect. I was doing two days a week, and I was at home the rest of the time. And you know, it's all about finding that balance. I don't worry as much now. I'm a mummy because, like you say, that she becomes your priority. And now it's all about Sienna, so everything else sort of fits in really. And I still, I still want to work because I love my work, mm. so I need that. But it has to sort of, it's just finding that balance really. Um, and as touch wood, it continues because I think I found it. And you seem to have controlled your career and managed it perfectly. i got to ask the question at a time when everybody's talking about the Harvey Weinstein stuff. Have you ever felt that like being a woman puts you under extra pressure and people have sort of asked favours to do you favours? I can't say I've ever experienced anything like that. I've um, been very lucky that I've got jobs off the back of going in and working hard and grafting and doing what I love. Um, but I never sort of experienced anything like that. And it's quite shocking that it is still 
Do you know what I think it is? And I've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks with various actresses. I, t- I spoke to Claire King the other week, who you might have worked with yeah. uh, in the past. She was in Emmerdale and Corrie. It seems to be a generation thing. I don't think our generation are surrounded by anything like this. I think this was a thing of the 60s yeah. and 70s and maybe 80s. I don't think our generation yeah. can even comprehend it. It's so ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. It, is, it really is. I mean, what, what can you say? It's, it's tragic that it's been going on for so long and, and he's been able to get away with it as well um, and I think I'm very lucky that it hasn't been in my generation and it's sad that it, it, it still goes on yeah incredible and then we look forward to Christmas I guess uh, your daughter will want to be coming with you will she to to see you perform what every show or every other show oh pretty much yeah she's going to come to rehearsals so she's, she's so excited that I'm going to be Snow White because she's obsessed with princesses so <laughs> her own little Snow White outfit coming to the opening show and the after and I've got a lot of family coming Christmas Eve but she'll probably want to be there as much as she can be um, which I can't wait I think that's why I'm excited as well because she understands it a bit more now so she'll be able to sit and watch through a full show without getting bored <laughs> and I guess it's every girl's dream to dress up in a posh frock and be flown in are you doing that sort of uh, flying in from the rafters do you have to do that it's painful you know <laughs> no I don't have to do that I just have to eat a poisonous apple um, so my <laughs> quite easy actually And it is true, isn't it? You can't be too camp in panto. No, you cannot. The bigger, the better. That's what they say. So uh, I'm excited. No producer ever said, can you tone it down a bit at a panto rehearsal, did they? Never. No. That oh, never happened. No, it's always large, large, <laughs> bigger, larger. So, um, and that's exhausting in itself, but you, you've got to do it. You've got to put your all into pantomime. I've loved talking to you. I can't wait to see you. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves at the St. Helens Theatre Royal. It opens on the 2nd of December through Sunday, the 7th of January uh, with the wonderful uh, Lucy Jo Hudson. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with everything. Great to talk to you. Thank you very much. And you as well.